This story dates back to June 10, 2000, when London's famous Millennium Bridge was opened to the public for the first time after its construction was completed. For the past two years, people had been eagerly waiting for the completion of this iconic bridge. Therefore, when it was opened, everyone wanted to use it on the very first day. This bridge was made exclusively for pedestrians to cross the River Thames in London. But as soon as people started walking on it, the Millennium Bridge began to sway alarmingly. Seeing this, the authorities sprang into action. For the first two days, the police prevented people from using the bridge, but after two days, it was closed again for the next two years. After this incident, London's famous bridge became a topic of global interest. All the engineers involved sat down, perplexed, wondering how such a sturdy bridge could sway merely due to people walking on it. The reason was something that the engineers had not predicted earlier. It was a unique problem that defied the laws of nature and shook one of the biggest mysteries of physics. Viewers, about 192 years ago in 1831, some soldiers of the British Army were parading over the Broughton Suspension Bridge in Northern England. The synchronization of the soldiers' footsteps caused the Broughton Suspension Bridge to collapse, resulting in 60 soldiers falling into the river and many being seriously injured. Fortunately, no lives were lost in this incident, but from that day onwards, the British Army instructed its soldiers not to march in sync while crossing bridges. This practice was not only adopted by the British Army, but also by militaries around the world for many years, and in some places, it is still followed. These were soldiers whose synchronized steps brought down the Broughton Suspension Bridge, but if we look at the footage of the Millennium Bridge in London, we notice something strange. Here, the pedestrians are not soldiers, so why are their steps so highly synchronized? And why couldn't this modern footbridge, built in the 21st century, withstand their synchronization? The answer to this lies in an experiment conducted about 350 years ago. In 1665, a famous Dutch physicist, Christian Huygens, invented the world's first pendulum clock. His aim was to help sailors at sea determine their location. In the past, sailors used to estimate their position at sea by looking at the sun or the stars. But this was just an estimation. It could determine the latitude, that is the north-south position. But if they knew the accurate time, they could also figure out their longitude, that is, their east-west location. At that time, clocks would either advance or delay by up to 15 minutes in a day, making them useless for this purpose. Hygen's pendulum clock was only off by about 15 seconds a day. His plan was to hang two pendulum clocks with heavy weights on a ship, so the motion of the pendulum clocks wouldn't be disturbed by the sea waves. And if one clock failed, there would be a backup clock. To test them, Huygens first hung both clocks from a beam in his house and started them one by one. But soon after, he noticed that the clocks were synchronizing with each other. When the pendulum of the left clock swung to the left, the pendulum of the right clock swung to the right at the same time. Huygens couldn't understand this behavior of the clocks. He tried disrupting their movement again, but within 30 minutes, they synchronized with each other once more. He thought maybe there was some air pressure connection between the two clocks, so he placed a cardboard between them. But after two minutes, the clocks synchronized again. Then he hung them separately on different chairs. Only then did their invisible connection break. But what was their connection when they were hanging from the same beam? In this video, 32 metronomes are placed on a table and started at different times, meaning they are not synchronized at the start. But just after two minutes, you can see that all 32 metronomes have astonishingly synchronized with each other, even though they seem to have no connection other than the table. The secret connection of synchronization does not only apply to non-living things, Research has shown that when fireflies are together, they all synchronize and flash at the same time. But it is necessary for a firefly to be close enough to another so that its flash can reach the other. If they are far apart, their synchronized flashing breaks. To see this properly, let's turn to this simulator. The more fireflies there are in an area, the higher the chance they will all synchronize and flash together. Humans also synchronize with each other in many matters. In this video, the audience is clapping for a performance, Initially, everyone was clapping at their frequency, but then what happened can be seen. No one told them to do this, but still, everyone matched their clapping frequency with each other. The phenomenon of synchronization is not limited to just one or two things. Take the example of the heart. Our heart beats in synchronization with our body. If a normal person runs fast, their heart rate immediately increases with them because the heart has to pump oxygen-rich blood to the brain. But if there is a problem with the heart, its synchronization with the body does not match. This condition, where the heart rate becomes irregular, is known as arrhythmias in medical terms. 
In this condition, if the heart rate suddenly increases, the heart pumps more blood, but the lungs do not inhale more oxygen. So what will happen? The brain will get more blood, but less oxygen, and this situation can be fatal. Similarly, if the heart rate slows down, it can also be life-threatening. So, less synchronization is harmful, but more synchronization can also create problems. Now, keeping all these examples in mind, let's look at the Millennium Bridge again. When so many people started walking on it simultaneously, their steps naturally synchronized with each other. The design of the Millennium Bridge was such that its cables provided support from the sides, not from the top. In civil engineering, especially in structural engineering, it's a rule that the designing of a footbridge's resonance frequency is not set equal to the frequency of human footsteps. When we swing our legs in sync with the frequency of a swing, the swing starts moving faster. Similarly, when people started walking in sync on the Millennium Bridge, their frequency matched the bridge's frequency, and the bridge began to sway slightly. Since the bridge's cables were on the sides, its movement was sideways. Due to this sideways movement, people also started walking sideways to balance themselves. And then, due to resonance, the movement of the bridge increased like a swing. After this problem was properly diagnosed, engineers installed a total of 89 shock absorbers on the Millennium Bridge, 37 to disperse energy, and 52 to control vertical movement. After completing their work, in February 2002, the Millennium Bridge was tested again. The company arranged for more than 2,000 people to walk on the bridge. This test is considered the largest bridge test in the world. After the test, as predicted, a significant reduction in the bridge's movement was observed. Even today, predicting synchronization, finding the invisible connection between two or more bodies, is very difficult. This is a natural phenomenon seen in birds when they fly together, in bees when they buzz together, or when they flutter their wings together in response to danger, as can be seen in this video.